If we just have a peek around the corner, we can see there's a German made MAN. Hello, German made MAN. On the other side of the MAN is an English MAN who happened to have a little bit of a mishap by pulling his drive shaft out of the gearbox and losing most of the oil on the floor under the ramp. Meanwhile, in Germany, there's a German MAN working on a trailer. Anyway guys, I want to apologise first of all because you didn't get a video last week. Really, really busy. Anyway, I've been uh, using these uh, tap sets, yeah, tap and die set from uh, Blue Spot. We'll do a review on it and I found that it was wanting because I needed a ratchet tap driver yeah it's only because of a lack of space to move the handle these are good but it's supplementary to this kit which is okay m3 is there such thing as an m3 bolt i don't know do you, where are they i don't know but anyway yeah i've been uh, using the uh, tap sets and my boy did tell me actually that um first second and third taps well they uh, you can start the uh, cleaning out a hole or even tapping a hole with the first tap which is tapered yeah so generally when you're cleaning out you want to use a tapered tap first of all and then use number three which has more thread cut on it to get to the bottom of a blind hole which is what it is on these anchor pins here luckily i didn't have to drill it out the bolts were already missing it was just crap in it but it does make it really awkward when there is uh, rust and crud in there but put a bit of grease on a tap and wind it in then wind it back out again and it's all good to go problem is is you probably realize that sometimes you have these nice tools that others want to use because they uh, don't want to spend money do they so that's hidden in my box there and it's only for good mates to use okay because that's real engineering stuff and some guys don't understand how delicate some of these tools are but hey oh never mind we'll hide that yes and guys i bought another torch i bought a torch for about 70 quid yeah this is one of those through night ones and i'm pretty sure you're uh, fed up with the uh, reviews of torches and it's summer you think you don't need torches however the uh, usual torch is not very good compared to this. This one is an all-round purpose one that is going to stay with me uh, on my uh, person all the time. This has a very extreme lifespan, whereas these I found myself wanting as the battery's gone flat when I've been using them. So uh, there is a, a purpose behind this, and uh, you probably know anyway that sometimes you get these magnetic torches, don't you? Yeah, four hours, that's it. Four hours on that, which is half a shift. Yeah, if you have to do a lot of work, they go and die on you don't they but also you leave them stuck to something you forget about and then the vehicle drives off whereas this one is non-magnetic so you have to put it in your pocket yeah it's actually a really good torch and i like through light so i will be doing a uh, torch review again pretty shortly but there is a caveat to this and i'm not going to tell you we'll have to uh, wait for the review yeah anyway i uh, after waiting for snap-on for weeks and weeks and weeks had a discussion on the price of guns, not impressed with the uh, price of the new guns, Milwaukee possibly, but this gun is actually okay, it's still working, it did get reconditioned a little while ago, they put a new motor in it under warranty, however you can see this is actually getting battered, and there's quite a bit of play, but what I did was go out and buy another battery, it was the cheapest solution, because the batteries are going okay, so that's 129 quid plus VAT. I don't like spending out on batteries because that means the employer's getting a, a cheap deal out of it, but the gun is still working. So it works, yeah, it's uh, take it home, use it at work, whatever, yeah, but it's getting weaker, slowly but surely it's wearing up, but I'm going to keep it for now. Not as strong as the air gun here, little red rooster from Mac Tools, yep. Yeah. But hey ho, that's the way we go. Yes, it did have a broken spring actually, a uh, suspension problem, and ended up uh, changing the top mount, the spring, and the shock absorber on the little Citroen. And yeah, that cost me a couple of days' holiday actually, because I was waiting for bits. And uh, this is what happened to the spring it snapped on a Sunday, couldn't get bits, ordered some bits, couldn't get everything until Tuesday. And uh, yeah, that took the top mount out, that was the problem. Yeah. Even though I still had to bodge it and nurse it to get it back to the workshop because I couldn't get the top nut off the uh, uh, shock absorber because Citroens, they are held in by one nut. So you see at the top here, Allen key, uh, yeah, split that. Yep, I split that and I couldn't get the nut off so I had to nurse it to get it back to the workshop and that was clanging all the way there and then just ripped it off with the air gun. But yeah, that split, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Yeah. 
So it's business as usual, same old thing, relines, repairs, blah, blah, blah. You you know the score, what it is in this business. And I just thought I'd give you the heads up because this is this week's, whereas the video you're going to see pretty shortly will be from last week, the BPW one. But life wouldn't be complete without doing a set of spring bushes in the week sometime, would it? Yep, so there we go. More spring bushes to do, as usual. That's just trailer fitting stuff, isn't it? Look at this. Plenty of meat left for another couple of services, isn't there? Anyway, enjoy the video coming up. Heute ist sehr heiß. Yes, it's very warm today. And welcome, my friends, once again to the uh, Trailer Fitters Toolbox. I am now converting you to the BPW way of thinking. Well, not yet, actually. I'm going to tell you about the course. But I'm going to ask you a question here first, a trivia thing. Industrial tools, industrial sockets, inch gun. I'll just pull the socket off, and it's held on by snap ring, but it also has a hole in there. Okay. Now when you put the uh, socket on, it's obvious that the hole can line up, but there's a groove in there as well as these other sockets. Not this one, this is a small half inch drive socket without a groove, but this is three quarter, which normally you'll find grooves in each one of these industrial sockets. Yes, what's the groove for? This is the question, so if you can answer it, put it in the comments below test your knowledge. If you don't know, I will tell you at the end of the video what these grooves are for. Anyway, I've got to crack on with this. This is a uh, three axle reline as well as a hub service, which means re-greasing new hub seals. Messy job, yeah. So what I want to do is tell you about this BPW course, and this isn't a Chinese product to big it up to say how good it is. Basically, it's just you go there, you learn, you do an exam, and if you pass, you get a qualification, which will actually hold you in good stead. It doesn't matter whether you do trailers all the time or whether just occasional trailers. It just uh, is a qualification to say that you actually know about BPW products. And of course, even myself, I don't get to see all of the products. Some of the uh, calipers we don't because we're all on drums on the fleets that come into this workshop. But of course, the uh, newer type of uh, compact that they have, the compact system they have, they did give us a little bit of education on this, and I'll give you the heads up here. There are actually no axle locators on this type of suspension system, which means that you've got to mark it out when you strip the trailing arm off the axle beam. Yeah, the course learning itself, yes, it's, this is for service technicians, and there are quite a few uh, things that you can learn, although you, you may have a lot of experience in hub bashing there are things that you might need to learn about calipers for instance and uh, service intervals the right type of grease to use torque settings and the such like on suspension systems and which bolts are stretch bolts and which bolts are not and uh, what size discs there are so it is fairly comprehensive and of course it is under the guise of heavy axle which sounds impressive because this is what we work on heavy axles yeah so my overall impression of the course was it was good but if you're a beginner it is only a lead in to uh, finding the information remembering certain details because the practical comes with the work and of course you learn that how to get around things yeah like this eco 2 hub system yeah they will actually tell you how to uh, put the locating peg in but i've got a different way of doing it and I find a success at that, which is not a biggie. However, you need to know a certain uh, torque settings and the things that actually can cause problems if you don't get them right. One of those is brake chamber fitting. Now, there is a standard with this where you have bungs fitted to uh, BPW brake chambers. Now, these are brand new axles on an old trailer. And the people who have uh, set this, uh, PDI or whatever, have not taken the lower position bung plugs out of both of the chamber portions. Yeah, so you can see that, the uh, park brake one here. Okay, they tell you about this in the course, and it is actually quite important, and they'll tell you why, because uh, this will hold air pressure in the chamber. It could hold the brakes on, yes. 
so these have to be removed the lower portions of it and when you do an exam they do ask you about this so yep what I'll do here is just pop them out now and this will be okay however we've not had a problem with they this has done 92,000 kilometers since the axles were fitted but doesn't mean to say there won't be a problem so guys lower positions bung plugs will have to come out like so not cut them but actually pull them out so you can see the chamber there so that will also be a drain as well yeah BBW do have a YouTube channel which is surprisingly uh, low subscribed and uh, it's BPV Bergische Achsen. Achsen actually means axle in German, yeah, or well, translates as such. There's good resource there if you sift through the videos, there are bits and pieces that you actually really do need to watch. Things like changing the trailing arm for uh, airbag mount on this uh, axle system, yeah it's uh yeah they're, they're good stuff once you've had the heads up on resources you can always go and use them can't you if you need to so i'll leave a link below and uh rubber next month like myself yeah we do tend to struggle until we have nice new tools yes like this is the sort of thing that they show you on the youtube channel yep so uh i didn't know to look at this and i thought oh, actually yeah okay that's how that one's done Yep, so it's good resources. I'll leave a link below for you guys. Now the practicals you get to do there, plus you get lectures on how to set up the TS2 caliper and the TSB caliper, which is interesting if you've never seen these calipers before. Nick Vernon himself, he's brilliant at teaching. He's a really good technical trainer. Now, I've uh, been on quite a few courses and some of the delivery from the DAF point of view has been quite weak whereas Nick has delivered the BPW course really really well so you know I'm sitting there as an old boy and I'm just absorbing information then taking it home thinking about it and then what I need to apply at my workplace is this is what I'm doing and of course I'm in my own little world and that's quite insular you go on a course, you then start to understand that BPW are actually there for us as technicians for support. They're not selling us anything because they've already sold the axles as a different department, yeah? And of course they are dominating the market at the moment, which means that they can reach out to technicians like ourselves, do the courses and become more proficient because there are some rubbernecks out there that really think they know what they're doing when they don't and they cause problems which we then have to sort out i like bpw simply because it's simple and you don't have to use an extremely large torque wrench to get a thousand newton meter hub nut setting do you it's the, the hub nuts click on and of course all you need to do is uh, just do it as you need to do it yeah now you can see here i'm actually struggling with this i know some of you guys work on pit side but it's all the same at the end of the day um, you find your own ways of doing things that you need to practically but there's the tiny bits of information especially about calipers because i don't generally work on calipers myself we don't see many of them at all um, we will do because a load of new trailers have come in with calipers on but they're all on drums which of course if you're new to the game or you don't know then those little bits of uh, information about tolerances and how far the drums can wear all that sort of thing is it's actually vital because then if you're like myself working in retail and you have to justify what you're doing you then can put that extra little bit of technical information in now this uh, reline and the hubs that i'm doing here this was inspected by a, a unit fit of daft trained and he's done the inspection not the relines but what he didn't know about was the hub service and of course i know yeah five years that really needs uh, uh, to be re-greased i've got the hubs off i've put another quote in and won the work i've won the hours therefore i can do it it looks good on the workshop and of course then you don't get comebacks but because you can imagine if you've done a reline and then the bearings are dry um, drum side and one fails then what happens is it comes back on you and it doesn't look good on the workshop at all does it and fleets these days are very fickle they want to see guys who have got qualifications of course and can do the job and run the fleets uh, do the work as cheap as possible that's just the way it is so bpw actually reached out to me they uh, found me on youtube and realized that i'm uh, getting uh, in contact with guys who are on the floor and this is what they want to do they want to reach out to you as well offer you technical support in any way that's possible so if you do have problems pulling a hub 
or you have a uh, bolt stuck in a stub shaft then they can offer either advice or possibly lend you the tools or even if it comes down to it they will come down and help you rectify the problem and their main message is and this is what i understand is that you do not have to struggle on your own this is the thing they are there for support and as i'll say and i will keep saying it the stuff that I've now learned I will apply because I need to do a little bit of correction. Not much, but there's a few bits and pieces that I've made simple mistakes with which I need to um, re-go over in the videos, which I'll do over time. And this is what I will show you, okay? Now, I was lucky because uh, Mike Stamen, a UK uh, guy, a network guy for a BPW, he took me around the factory, showed me how the factory works. Now that was really, really impressive and you don't really uh, get to uh, get an insight of how big BPW are until you see the amount of axles they've got outside the factory and inside the factory. And of course they have the machines as well to do the jobs. Now fairly high tech, you check this guy out, he's actually logging and making sure that each of the hub nut clips is in place properly. So anyway, the, the details that you get on the course, you've got to listen and you must take notes if you're going to do one of these courses. There's some bits of information for rubbernecks, especially 600 newton meters to 660 newton meters. Nominally, 630 newton meters is actually the wheel torque for the wheel nuts. Yeah, otherwise you at 700 newton meters, that's the maximum. Otherwise, you can start to pull the studs through the hub. Yeah. And I know there's some guys that actually talk everything up to 700 new meters regardless. Anyway, yeah, a mech tech course it isn't a mech tech course without cutaway axles and components. Yeah, they've got all that. Plus, yeah, you've got details which they teach you. It's really, really important to pay attention. Z90, that will tell you on this exciter ring how many teeth it's got yep so you learned something there from me i'm not going to tell you any more details in this video uh, you've got to watch the rest of my videos to find out but of course yeah the course you get fed you get your sandwiches at lunchtime you get your coffee as well which of course i was smashing into all day long just to make sure that my brain is operational and soaking up the information because there is a lot of information in this course right so i did actually uh, have a little bit of modification here I used to use an air hammer and bend the clip and then pull it off. Well, they advise using a screwdriver and prizing it out. Well, I don't like using screwdrivers because screwdrivers are for screws. These pry bars work just as well. But yeah, okay, that's an easier way of doing it. So learn something there. Okay, so got a little bit of metal. The tool that I did show you, uh, well, I didn't show you all of it. And uh, I did make a little bit of a mistake because... There is an issue, and I will show you this, but first of all, I'll show you how effective this tool actually is, and it's only half of the set, okay? Now, you just uh, put this on, and then you just bang it into place. It's as easy as that, which is lovely. That is really nice, but you can only get three out of the four clips on. I didn't uh, know until I've been on the course that on the other side, it is a, a little bit tight, but there is another tool for it. Yeah, this will be a made-up tool that they made up in Germany and they've showed on a video as you can see here. Now, because you're engineers, you should be able to engineer something up like a G-cramp to get the job done. Yeah, this part is not available. Whereas the tool that I showed you, I've given you the part number, that's the only thing that's available in the UK presently. But you can't get the top clip because on the Airlight system, on the Airlight 2, yeah, the spring is in the way so it's uh, impossible to swing a hammer that's why they have a G cramp type of arrangement which is yeah fair enough but that's another part of the tool that's missing that we'll have to acquire so what do I do do what I usually do put a little bit of grease on it a light hammer and just tap it on at an angle and look that just goes on easy but that tool actually makes it okay yeah the other thing BPW were talking about on the course was uh, Purging the grease, yeah, uh, greases are not uh, compatible, so if you use a cheap grease, get rid of the uh, BPW grease and vice versa. I'm very, very wary about purging grease, especially if you can't see where it's going to, so while the linings are off, yeah, you can see the grease coming out here and there's a hell of a lot of it. Yeah, that's okay, it hasn't come out on the brake side, it's only come out, but it doesn't always do that on the uh, outside or the outside the backing plate. So you've got to be very, very cautious about this, and I'm not 
really 100% agreeing with BPW about uh, purging grease out if you can't see it, but that's what I do. And just to drive the point home, this is one that I found, purged it through because I can see what's happening on the other side and I had to pull the hubs anyway, but you can see how much grease has come through which will get onto the drums. The reason for this is wear and tear. Not all trailers will stay nice and new forever and you can see the amount of movement there which means the grease is getting past the o-ring there and it will get on the brake shoes and I have my suspicions this actually causes black spots on the drum once the grease has started to burn in okay because the grease will burn off but there is a residue that is left. This is dangerous so you have to be very very cautious. So anyway, yes, I learned something about rollers and brake shoes, and I'm not going to tell you. Go on the course. Go on the course and learn, yeah? You will see stuff in the videos because I'm the man on the street, but uh, what you learn on the course may be not what I'm showing you, and BPW might not agree with some of my techniques, okay? But that is something that you learn over time, don't you? Yeah, so behavior modification, or carry on as uh, always. One thing I did learn was about greases, yep, yeah, so you've seen what hubs I'm, uh, I've put on, is this the correct grease for these type of hubs, yes or no? Let me know or go on the course and learn about this because it's really, really important. Anyway, that's it, that's that trailer done, relined, hubs, ABS check and road tested, it's all okay. I'll bring the next one in which is not BPW, these are like tankers and they got the uh, Chrysler Daimler axles on them, which, to be honest with you, yeah, they're not as good as BBW. There's, you have a little bit more grief getting the hubs off, don't you? And of course, that's work time. You don't get paid extra if you have to struggle, do you? And you make sure your manager dips into his pocket and gets you trained up. Okay, so that's it. Oh yeah, so this is the end of the video, by the way. Okay, so why do we have a hole in here and not in the three-quarter one? Well just the way it's been designed. Now we'll have a rubber ring and a peg here, so you probably already know exactly what I'm going to say. Sockets have grooves and peg holes in them. Yes, okay. Industrial application is not just for air guns, and I will show you in a little while why. Okay, so the peg is, secures the uh, socket onto the gun, and then that secures the peg so it doesn't drop out. Yep, so what we do is like this. I know some guys use split pins on sockets, don't they, when the snap ring uh, finally gives out or gives up the ghost, yeah? Well, this is the way you can do it, okay? And you can buy these from Cromwell Tools, these rubbers, depending on what size the socket is, yeah? But there you go, that's secure, and the peg won't fall out. Of course, it shouldn't snap either, because the, the drive is on the square, isn't it? Yep, yeah, so there you go. And they are fairly easy to drop out, just push that out and there you go, get the socket out and can change it. Yeah, it's a handy little addition if you have one of those type of guns that won't secure your sockets on, or you have a loose socket and they come in different sizes. And where I learned this from was from the BPW factory. This is where the application is and you can see why it's actually needed because the sockets are downward and they'd fall off otherwise, but there you go, pull it down and the peg is in there, yeah? And this is the machine. This is what does up the suspension U-bolts. Yep, you can see them. Four sockets on either. And they do them up to an accurate torque at the factory. How about that?